Everybody wants to live in a better world. But what is it, a better world? Fika Kova, a video and multimedia artist, free thinker and theorist, claims that she found the secret of happy society. She developed an artistic theoretical background of land of good, a society where everybody will be happy and prosperous. Today I'm meeting Fika Kova on the topic Women Did It. Hello. Before we go into the Women Did It topic, could you please tell us what is the Land of Good project? Land of Good is an artistic project that wants to create a new sort of society where everybody would be happy and prosperous, where everybody would profit from success of each other. Is it possible to achieve? Is there a formula that would lead to the happiness and satisfaction for everybody? The aim of this project is to find this out. Did a society like that ever exist on our planet? Will a society like that ever exist? Is a society like that possible per definition? And what would it take to create a world where ordinary people become extraordinary? To answer this question, it's a hell of a job. Our society became too complex. You really need to break down the massive, vast topics like culture, politics, economics, uh, social structures, history, anthropology, etc., etc. What is our civilization? What did we achieve during 8,000 years of our progress? Do the results satisfy everybody? We don't need a big research to answer this. It's pretty much into your face everywhere. All wealth is distributed to the 1% of population. Only they can afford luxury. The rest is meeting ends or poor or even hungry every day. It's kind of awkward percentage, don't you think? Wealth distribution is extremely out of balance. What about happiness? What is the percentage of happy people in the world? Zero. We all have to deal with personal traumas, broken hearts, uh, struggles, challenges. Most of them are planted in our childhood by our own parents, friends, and school. For us, it's normal. We call it a personal growth. But is it? Each day, in the United States only, there are over 3,041 attempts to commit suicide by young people between 10 and 18 years old because of unhappiness. Teenagers just don't know how to deal with their emotions. Suicide is the second leading cause of death between 10 and 24 years old. But criticizing the system is not the aim of this project. In fact, many inventions of the male-driven era will widely be used in land of good. Mm -hmm. Ideally, this research needs to remain as objective as possible. I must not take sides. It's not against patriarchal, male-driven way to run the world. It's about examining everything what the humanity has ever done, extracting the best from it and find the harmony. Land of Good is about transformation. This is also not a conspiracy theory. Some of the conspiracy theories were taken in consideration during the research phase, but this project is not about discussing them. It's about pure creation, the creation of a better world. Everybody wants to live in a better world. But what is it a better world? How does it look like? Can somebody describe it, please? Do we have a plan? A clear strategy? What exactly needs to be achieved? What would people of the better world do and say? What would they eat? What would they wear? What would they build? Many of us want to help the planet, uh, the planet and do good, but if we would have a clear strategy and work together towards one direction, I think we could help ourselves and our planet much faster. We do have these United Nations Sustainability Goals as a plan. That's right. 
and because the least sorted out all components of our society, I suggest we use this list as a structural reference for our project. Content-wise, the list is rather a shocker, because apparently each and every sector of our life has a problem. There is not even one sector that works well for everybody. Look at it. Basic needs like food, water, health, education, energy, work, social interaction, cities, communities, climate, nature. There is a problem everywhere. When I look at it, I see a testimony of the fact that the system just doesn't work for everybody. This list is more like a handbook of our problems and not yet a model of a better world. But imagine for the art of it, I thought, what if we take all the knowledge we have, learn from all mistakes that humanity has been through, and for the art of it, build a society that would supposedly work for everybody. I'm just curious, is it finally, after all suffering, possible to crystallize a perfect world? How did you come up with this idea? What was the inspiration for Land of Good Society? You know, Land of Good idea is probably an extract of an entire lifetime. A lot of ingredients were thrown in my blender. I have lived through communism and democracy, dictatorship and monarchy, socialism, capitalism, you name it, I've done it. I also traveled a lot for my previous career as a DJ and singer. I toured through many countries. I am proud of my friendships with good people around the world. I've been following and studying Christianity, Orthodox and Protestant, Calvinism, Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, Theosophy, Neuroscience, Brain Science, Anthropology, Archaeology and practiced uh, New Age Science. Besides that, I studied Psychology and Pedagogy in Conservatorium of Moscow. I can imagine that Land of Good Idea is the product of all these studies and experiences. What strikes me the most is that Regardless social status and nationality, we all want the same things, simple things. Yet, through all layers of societies, everything is complicated. To be happy every day is complicated for everybody. So seeing all that around the world, a question arose. What sort of society allows people to live well? Not only to be able to pay the bills, but truly, I mean, where the quality of life and social interaction would support and satisfy everybody. So what does Land of Good, Happy Society have to do with Women Did It? What is the connection? A direct connection. We can't start building a new society without a stable, proper foundation. This search for the Happy Society Foundation brought me to the fundamental outcome. Without the acknowledging of the importance of women in the evolution and progress, there is no stability in the foundation possible. Women did as much as men did. Gender balance or gender harmony is the foundation. Shall I explain? Please. Looking for the right foundation, I was asking myself, what is it within the society that is responsible for the happy life? Is that economy? Is it, is it an economic growth? Probably on the contrary because our economy is the main source of all inequalities, 1% of wealth distribution kind of situation. If not economics, maybe there is a particular social structure that would make us happy. The most equality-oriented social structures like democracy and communism also led to inequality. I live in one of the most democratic countries in the world. 
Nevertheless, even here, one of nine children in the Netherlands grow up in poverty. So proud of its democracy, United States of America has a third of the population live in poverty or in near poverty. So, so much for democracy. The communism of the Soviet Union, where I also lived, developed massive poverty in the end. I've been there. So much for communism. Our civilization just didn't realize successfully any social structure that would lead to the prosperity of everybody. Can politics maybe create a happy society? Politics divide us in nations, parties, countries, conflicts, wars that lead to suffering and poverty. So politics is also not the answer to the happiness. But what is? So I had no choice but to create a non-existing social structure, a system that would hypothetically lead to the collective happiness. To do that, I had to step out of everything we know and start to build from the scratch. To create a brand new world is a super exciting journey. And I'm inviting you on board of Land of Good Journey. So if you have some ideas, please connect with me. Just one request, please. Be kind and patient. Land of Good is like a precious new babe, very vulnerable baby that needs your support and understanding and care. Thank you. How can they reach you? You can start with writing a comment under this video. So you couldn't find any existing system that would answer your idea of a happy society. Where did you find your answers? Um, I think an artistic mind is probably a very important tool here. Artists have a possibility to imagine out of the box. The fantasy of an artist might bring us to the places where we have never been before. It's a well-known fact that all inventions were previously described by some, by some artists and uh, writers. But the society exists out so many ingredients, it's dazzling. So I decided to start from the very beginning. What made us human? What is the drive behind being human? I will spare you all the theories and opinions because this talk is not about the origin of humankind, but I do like to discuss the latest discovery. The social science of today surprises us when it says, Apparently, gossip is what makes people human because it allows us to pass on vital information about who to trust and who not to trust. To gossip about somebody who is not here requires an abstract, concept-like thinking. And that's the ability that distinguishes us from all the other animals. That became such an important skill for the evolution that it led to a mutation into a homo sapiens, a reasonable man. And who are the gossipers of the world? Women. Women. This shattered my whole world. It inspired me to look at our history from an entirely different perspective. Think about it. Women's social behavior mutated us in what we are now. So women did it. What did women do more? At schools and universities, we learn that the progress is a pure male prerogative. This illustration from a school book represents pretty much our mainstream orthodox way of thinking. Everything we have, we owe to men. Men are cleaning, they do household, they skin first, they make fire. Men did it all. Women are not even in the picture. Unexpectedly, the independent archaeology gave an opportunity to reconsider our far, far way past. Official history pictures our ancestors as wild, 
aggressive savages slash nomads that exterminated all fauna and other human-like species for the survival of the fittest. And then they find this. And this. And this. And what about this? The radiocarbon date estimates those structures older than 10,000 years old. Weren't we wild, dumb, savage slash nomads before 8,000 years? But look at this, older than 10,000. To realize a project like this requires an incredible engineering skills. So who built this? There are thousands of underground tunnels and chambers found around the world, built often on top of each other. Some of them have 8 to 11 floors deep. There are underground cities that connect it with each other. They are huge. Those are not just the one experiment in the history, they are interconnected. They found those tunnels in Europe, in Japan, in China, in America, in the Middle East, really everywhere in the world. This is the underground city found in Cappadocia, Turkey. They had their water supply from the inside and not from the outside. This is how it looks like now. It's a museum open for visit. This is a hotel in Cappadocia that tried to recreate the atmosphere of an ancient home. This is the tunnel inside of Giza Pyramid. This is an ancient wall in Cusco, in Peru. You can see it very clear, the different style of construction. This is megalithic period, this is Inca period. Megalithic period, Inca period. Besides this physical evidence, there is another sort of evidence that our ancestors were living in harmony with each other, nature and animals for thousands of years. DNA experts find the evidence of interbreeding. So it looks like they weren't at all wild, dumb, savage slash nomads, but a developed, cohesive, durable society with a technology level that we don't understand. Some of those blocks are 100 tons. Despite their progress, they didn't leave us a polluted landscape. We don't find anything synthetical or plastic. All monuments are entirely from natural stone. They didn't build robots. Instead, it looked like they built a better human and a prosperous society. A society devoted to take care of their own people. How exciting! What was their secret? We always are looking for the better future, but might there be a better past? What if by relooking the happily ever before, we might move into a happily ever after? Maybe exactly there I will find that fundamental balance that I am looking for. What if we link the future and the past? What if we combine our knowledge with theirs? Will we finally move into the better future? You might have something there. What is your theory of their success? Uh, physical evidence shows that uh, prehistoric culture was pretty much into worshipping a female. But in order to understand it properly, we need to go back in time say 200,000 years, to the beginning of it all, to the dawn of the cognitive revolution. 
An important transition found place at that time, because working on two legs resulted in a mutation that narrowed the pelvic canal for the baby to pass through, childbirth became difficult and very dangerous. In addition, the babies were born smaller and helpless for five long years. Unlike other primates, nomadic life became catastrophic for females. They were in hard need of shelters. To survive as species, males would have to let females settle down. So once women came, the right gave, they stayed. It's all about location, location, location. Also, the approaching glacial period made our ancestors get serious about finding and making good shelters. And when the Ice Age hit the planet, uh, somewhere 115,000 years ago, they permanently moved into caves. They went in into the mountain, into the earth. The concept of homey as a pillar of evolution was born because of women. Adoration and mystification of women was a norm. There are numerous statues of goddesses from that time found around the world. The signs of worshiping birth, the miracle of life was directly associated with women. That's why women were seen as goddesses, as the agents of nature, fertility, creation. Round, oval and egg-like shapes are typically female-associated symbols. Also, the animals like serpent, snake, fox, cat, birds are found all over the world. As you can see, there is a clear fundamental difference in building the constructions. Our world has mostly straight lines, based on endless repeating of the same brick or block. In their world, endless diversity in sizes and shapes. No stone or block is the same. Also, the opposite are the shapes in architecture. We have lots of this, straight up forward lines, and a little, or not at all like this, round shapes. You find a difference in everything. They were like the opposite of us. Our civilization depicts the world strictly through the embodiment of a male, the god, Pope, the president, national heroes, the dictators, the godfather, the big brother, everything is in fear and devotion to the male, the patriarch. If that prehistoric civilization depicted the world through the embodiment of a female, mustn't we consider the possibility of that system being matriarchal? And can we learn something from it? Can we adopt something from them? Where do you think this adoration for a female came from? Uh, for millions of years, the pregnancy was the biggest mystery for men. Men used to cut their penis in spiritual rituals, in the likeness of women, hoping to have their power of reproducing. Another advantage of their menstrual cycles is the time management. Women were working calendars. During the dark times of Ice Age, that was handy. Living in a group, they were menstruating at the same time. That inevitably led to rituals that would become a lifestyle. The concept of culture was born. Settling in caves was an actual, true launch of the evolution. If women would not insist on staying in caves, our ancestors would probably wander around with a close to zero chance of survival. But women not only stayed in caves, they also managed it. They would naturally try to secure it and nest it. All animals do nest, including humans. I think the future archaeology will surprise us with their future finds in the mountains or underneath. 
they already find some mysterious disks and some other artifacts produced on a mysterious way. We just can't place it nowhere in the history of humankind, especially not before 10,000 years ago. Eventually, women would feel a certain social pressure to improve their caves. That led to the serious development of new technologies. There was also another power of women, the ability to heal. While men were hunters, women were professional gatherers. They tried each and every plant and root available. They knew some plants have relieving and healing powers. Women treated injuries, dislocations, abscesses, uh, insect and animal bites. There is an evidence that they were performing surgeries and amputations. They of course knew about hallucinating and relaxing qualities of some plants. Pleasures were scarce, so the ones who provided them were much appreciated. You spoke about pressure. Was social pressure even known in such early society? And if there was already social pressure, can we consider it as a happy society? Or do you suppose that society was free of social inequality? Um, I think where is a society, there is inequality. Someone is bigger and stronger, the other smaller and weaker. Inequality, or shall we better call it diversity, is a peculiarity of any society. I think it's not about equalizing the diversity, it's about how to harmonize it. How to make the stronger to take care of the weaker. And it looks like that megalithic society achieved that. So my theory of their success is that they successfully managed the golden balance between genders, the gender harmony. And it's interesting to investigate how that golden balance was shaped and polished. And we can start this investigation with an analysis of the origins of the social pressure. We can also use this opportunity to look at the social pressure even in the broader sense. Where did women's urge to enhance themselves and the environment originate from? Why women compared to men are just unable to live in the dirty, ugly surroundings? Women always need to organize and clean to function properly. Why? Paradoxically, and funny enough, the road to femininity was paved by meat. Meat ruled the world of hominoids for at least two million years. It's a very long time. If you had meat, you could get anything you want. Meat was the currency. And who would deliver meat? The hunters. Men. In the times of famine, the main concern of all women was to make men to share their hunted meat with them. How to make men to bring meat to women? Of course, the status of God has helped, always, but you need a strong basic instinct to overcome eating instinct. And what basic instinct would urge men to repress their hunger? Sex and safety. So men instinctively choose women who would increase their chance of survival and reproduction. A woman with a better secured cave, with a dry cave, a woman who is able to reserve food for scarce days, a cave where men could put their legs up after the exhausting hunt and being served, in exchange for meat, of course. So women were forced to come up with ideas how to attract male's attention, to make him your personal provider. 
The competition for the best man was on. Welcome to the age of meat diggers. Besides a better cave, women came also up with better clothing, makeup, tattoos, fragrance, body painting, hair painting and hairdo. Fashion and beauty industry was born. Women were depicting males' accomplishment, flattering them, honoring their powers, showing their appreciation, locking them into their caves. They made first art. Please note that all those cave paintings are all about meat. No exception. We also find some hands. Those hands look more like marking a territory, marking a cave. I came here, I live here, this place is taken. Maybe these were the first signs of space claim or property claims, speaking in our terms. Then it looks like women took over the cooking. That gave a tremendous impulse to the progress. Didn't men cook? Men were always outside in the wild, exploring and hunting for meat. And women task, amongst others, was to be around the fire. To impress men, women would become handy and creative with food. I suppose the cuisine started much earlier than we imagine. Domestication of men followed by the domestication of animals. Being around the food all day, it was most likely that women were feeding up some wild animals, slowly turning them into pets. Later, men would use dogs for hunting. So if we look at the pillars of the progress promoted by our old school books, men did it all. But if we look at land of good analysis, men and women did it together. From land of goods diagram, looks like women did it all. Is there anything left for men? Land of good is not aiming to underestimate the role of men in the evolution. Never. Male strength and physical power paved the way of the survival, literally. Being physically stronger, men were developing technologies of hunting, making tools and making fire. Men were excellent providers and protectors. Women adored their male, this, this male raw power, and we still do. Competing with the bigger carnivores, men came up with numerous inventions. But there were other inventions that paved the way to the success of our species. The inventions made by women. You see, there is a perfect balance. Men were developing their meat provision techniques and women were developing meat processing techniques. Men were developing fire-making, women fire-keeping techniques. Men were running the, the, the organization outside of the cave and women inside of the cave. Different fields of activities, but equally important. Considering that a male-driven society would always perform from the outside, it's always out there. It's in the male's DNA. The exploration, the conquest of the new, the economic growth, the God, the search for the salvation on another planet, the only way is up. We are inspired by our society to go bigger, faster and higher. That's why we have a lot of this straight forward lines, the symbolization of the follows. Straight lines create corners, exclusivity. You can put something or someone in the corner, far away from the center where it's all happening. That's one of the biggest characteristics of our world. Ranks, classes, hierarchy, exclusivity, limited. Because the straight line always has the beginning and the end. So it's always limited. And it's always the future tense. The better world is always in the future. The better future. When is it actually? Is there a date?
The result of the out there mentality is a heavy waste production. And that's what we see in our society, plenty. Being the opposite, a female-driven society would perform from the inside, keeping what you already have, recycling in cycles, circles, spirals, the inner connections, rebirth. It would always be in here, inside, inside of the cave, of the mountain, of earth. That's why we see a lot of round shapes. Circles is inclusiveness. Each part of the circle is the part of the whole. It's all about the present tense, the better now. That's the only way how we humans can imagine the eternity. There is no beginning and no end. Therefore, there is no waste. The only way is up is our reality. The only way is in is unknown. Do you think the absence of in is a problem in our modern society? The absence of in is a huge problem. Too much of out results in the pollution and the waste. And that's exactly what we see in our society. We are burying ourselves in our own trash. Too much of in would probably result in the absence of exploration and outward development. But we don't see any signs of pollution, nor the absence of exploration and development before 10,000 BC. It seems like prehistoric people had it pretty, pretty much together. Economy growth based on recycling. City constructions based on inclusiveness. Internal spiritual growth results in external practical growth. Educated self-esteem of the individual combined with the esteem to the society. Personal happiness is integrated and intertwined with the well-being of the whole, nature, relationships and society. How can you be sure that they achieved all of that? Because to construct the monuments like this requires not only brilliant engineering skills, but also a huge organization. To construct it around the world requires even higher skills in organization. Comparable to our modern civilizations, when we see skyscrapers everywhere in the world, we share this knowledge with each other. So their global connection must be as good as ours, at least. And because we don't find any evidence of bloody conflict, we conclude that they were good in communications and because their civilization lasted much longer than our civilization, we can conclude that they were happily coexisting. How can you be sure that gender harmony in a particular is responsible for the survival of humans? Because we find so much evidence of the women's worship and little or not at all evidence of men's worship, like in our society. We can conclude that the adoration of a woman was the drive behind their civilization. This ancient disk found in Crete cannot be dated and can't be deciphered, except the first word only, to the mother goddess. So that important was it for their society. We can compare it with our society where all most important books begin with O oh Lord. This applies to almost all artifacts. They strongly suggest female-minded society. But to suggest that it was a totalitarian matriarchy would be short-sighted, I think, because we can't ignore the obvious to survive the harsh, difficult environment of the Ice Age you need a lot of raw physical power and mental strength, which are male components. Somehow women were able to create an ideal for men environment. 
and men would do anything for their women. I think this is the main understanding of gender foundation. Men being stronger or taking care of their women, and they did it with pleasure. And women in return were doing everything in order to make their protecting and providing job as easy as possible. They provided comfort and love and beauty and everything what they were missing out there hunting. And once again, we don't find any evidence of wars, genocide, massacres, which our reality has plenty happening as we speak. We modern people don't get any education on peace or on friendship, neither on how to serve the society. These gigantic monuments is not only the evidence of a civilization, it's the evidence of a successful civilization. That's a big difference. And because we find the exact same style globally, it means there were successful interconnections, communications, trade, infrastructure, central knowledge, and probably central education. But can I say, women are still ruling the world, but more in the shadow of man? Isn't it time to come out of that shadow? Is this not the right balance? <laughs> you see, from the shadow of men, women can only rule men's world. From the shadow of men, it's difficult to give enough light for the world to change. This shadow position, by the way, started after the Ice Age, somewhere 11,000 years ago, when the agriculture was taking over the societies. From around 10,000 years ago, the role of women was gradually diminished with the escalation during the past 2,000 years. In land of good, women will be put back on the map in full glory. Just like the ancient women, they will govern, balanced out with men. Male powers combined with female powers. One hand washes the other. The genders rather complemented each other instead of competing with each other. Therefore, in land of good, I will propose to be two heads of society, two leaders, a man and a woman. They would wisely divide their fields of expertise, but keep it centrally together. The history of humankind will be not his story, it will be our story. Learning gender harmony and exercise it would be the norm in land of good. I love your double governing idea. It would also be a good idea for our reality, actually. However, some of your statements sound rather conservative, even old-fashioned. We live in the age of gender equality, transgenders and mixed toilets. How does land of good fit in with the statement that genders are not equal per definition? Instead, only gender harmony with a clear horizontal segregation could be a steady foundation for a happy society. Uh, for me, the confusion lies in the formulation. The term gender equality is confusing because everybody knows that genders are not equal. Men are physically and mentally stronger than women. By announcing gender equality term, what they meant is probably the equality of human rights. Men and women must be equal before the law. And that's an absolute true and absolute priority. Equal human rights for everybody is the first step towards the better world. I think so. However, land of good looks already further than this. Land of good is already about next step. After the equal human rights are achieved, it will be about the rediscovering, implementation and appreciation of true female qualities, 
a true femininity, such as work of love, beauty, grace, compassion, education, leisure, pleasure, the in, the intuitive, what will lead to another free kind of energy. Land of Good is not about making a corporate career. It's not about winning for men. It's not about how to become a female president. Is Land of Goods not all about feminism? I think we should leave feminism out of it. Feminism is doing a very important job, fighting for equal human rights for all people. Feminism was always having a hard time because it is in antagonism with the most powerful instinct of them all, the instinct of procreation. Our entire evolution is based on procreation. But the procreation has a downside, which is overpopulation. Today, in order to survive as species, we need to decelerate procreating. And survival is the other, the most powerful instinct. This changed relationship between procreation and survival is new to us. We never had this problem before on such a large scale. And this problem we feel everywhere. The tension of modern feminism is that along with fighting for equal rights, feminists attempt to take over the power that was created by alpha men and for alpha men. Today, we see the rise of alpha woman. To produce offspring is obviously not really on the priority list of an alpha woman. This leads to reduced overpopulation feels like through women who always were the guardians of nature and balance, through feminism, if you want, nature is saving us from overpopulation. Also, increased homosexuality might uh, be considered as self-regulation of nature. So, feminism and gender blender are very important at the moment, and we need to support it. The contradiction here is that women who were always responsible for the procreation for millions of years are now suddenly responsible for non-procreation. 180 degrees change. It's tough. But women are smart. So we can start to change by trusting women's intuition and be flexible. And I just hope that becoming a real man is not the ultimate goal of feminism, but becoming a real woman. And that after the stage of restoring equal rights for men and women, women will start to restore their original female powers. To conclude this topic, the foundation of any happy society should be gender harmony. And if we use the UN list as the guideline for our research, we must put gender harmony as the priority number one on our land of good list. Specifically, researching women's role in evolution and progress, recovering female powers, and double governing. But where do you want to build your land of goods? Can I move in? <laughs> Luckily, the technology comes in handy. Already today, they build virtual realities that feels very real. As an art project, we can build land of good in virtual reality and observe its development. Why in VR? Why not really try to build land of good in our reality? Because everything in our reality is submitted to one patriarchal system. All people in the world, whatever they do, serve that system. As early as at birth, every baby gets a personal number, without even knowing or understanding it or giving a permission for. The system has the power to control you and make choices for you. The system plays God. It directs your life and every minute of it. What's bad about it? Nothing. It works in our reality pretty conveniently. We all function according to the system, even if you are against it, even if you are fighting with it, you still contribute to its development. It's a paradox. 
Even feminism, which fights with male domination, actually supports masculine powers. It's a paradox. Everything serves the system because whatever you do will be the part of the system. Therefore, it is impossible to get out of the system. And that makes it impossible to build land of good here. If we build it in our reality, it will be just another experiment of our patriarchal system. But we want land of good to be an independent reality, free from any kind of system. So if we want a new reality, we need to build it somewhere outside of the system. And virtual reality is such a place at the moment. It's free and independent. By the way, there is a whole theory that suspects that we humans already live in the virtual simulation without even knowing that. This theory can help us to accept that this reality is not the limit, that we are able to multiply realities and choose to live in one of them. Theoretically, we should be able to switch realities. If the prediction of many science experts will be fulfilled, then, then in less than 100 years, the abilities of computer will increase at least a thousand times. My work from crossover series tried to demonstrate reality's parallelism, when the hypothetically existing matriarchal society would cross over our reality for the sake of information exchange. If you don't have a government, how is your society functioning? How do you control taxes, media, people? What is taxes? Money. What is money? Our mother, if she loses even one of her children, the war considered to be lost for both parties. In I mentioned, the only victory is when conflicting sides find the courage to come to an agreement. If it will come so far that we will be able to create our own inhabitable realities, we will have land of good ready to move in. Turn key. If I understand correctly, your project propagates going back to nature. How does the technology like VR fit into this plan? Land of good is only partly about going back to nature. But mostly it's about finding the harmony between genders, human needs and nature. Many inventions of our male-driven era will be applied in land of good. Besides, modern civilization did open for us an extraordinary possibilities. Technology based on electricity is a typical product of modern civilization and we are mastering it. It did make our lives easier. It's actually a very female approach. Use what you already have for the benefit of your people. We have this technology already, so why not use it? How is this an art project? It sounds more like a profound semi-scientific research. The information during my research gave me a lot of inspiration to make videos. It resulted in a series called She, Crossovers and Women. Series She was a reflection of my investigation of the role of women in the society. Women is dedicated to rediscovering of the feminine. And the crossover series, as I already mentioned, is an imaginary conversation between patriarchal society and hypothetical matriarchal society. So the research is my inspiration and the invitation to create. So, in the year 2019, if the people of the future will excavate straight-line buildings of our civilization, would they assume that we were in a patriarchal society? Uh, theoretically, yes. Practically, no. Because none of our constructions will make it up to 20,000 years. Our constructions are not long-lasting. Our constructions require high maintenance. Without high maintenance, our constructions become waste, 
ruins and they, van they just vanish to compare to their constructions, to those megalithic constructions that didn't have any maintenance at all for at least 10,000 years. And they are as good as new, super long-lasting. That's why their society is so fascinating. They are the champions of sustainability. Unfortunately, our time is up for today. Thank you, Fika. Well, thank you so much. We covered one of the 17 topics today. Stay tuned on Land of Goods channel for the next interview with Vika Kofa, the founder of Land of Goods. Well, thank you very much. Thank you too for your time and your effort to listen till the end. And I hope it resonates with what you think and with your concept of a better world. Thank you.